Mr. Carl Ludwig, who's the chairman and uh, chairman of the executive board, and also to recognize Dr. Schumann. I also take this opportunity to also recognize the governor of Nairobi, uh, Dr. Evans Kidero. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for attending this event. We've been looking forward to have you in the forum. And I also want to take this opportunity to also recognize uh, the health minister, Dr. Masharia, who is also my personal friend. Um, all the doctors, all the professionals in the room and all the other leaders that maybe you haven't mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you uh, very much. And I want to take this opportunity to also say thank you to Mark because um, Mark started this um, initiative, uh, which is a media campaign, basically. And uh, Jimmy wanted me to say why. I'm not an expert in fertility matters. All I did was speak out. All I did was say something where nobody could speak. In a society where everything, fertility and infertility is spoken in harsh tones. I can't tell my story today, but I got my son through a surrogate mother. And I did the first interview when the baby was born to speak about um, surrogacy, to speak about infertility issues that are affecting women, especially in Kenya and in Africa. And when I spoke, nobody else was speaking. Everybody was hiding. Because in Africa, we always associate fertility matters with women. It's a woman who bears the pain. It's a woman who carries all the shame and embarrassment. It's the woman who cries tears at night when the husband is not watching. In our society, once you get married, the first year they start looking and pointing fingers at the woman. They start telling a man, what kind of a woman did you get married to? How comes she's not giving us a child? When we speak, we have to encourage our husbands, we have to encourage our brothers to also come out and speak. It shouldn't be just a woman's burden. It should be a couple's burden. And if we start talking, then they all start coming out. The reason why they're not coming out, because we're not talking. So today morning as we leave here, you can ask what role can you play? What can you say? Just speak. Whenever you gather in a, in a nightclub, in a, in a church, in a market, in a school, speak. And I assure you that someone out there is listening. Somebody is waiting to hear your voice, to get encouraged. And when they heard my voice at the platform that I've been blessed with by the people of Taita Taveta County, at least they could see that I relate to their pain. I have walked through that journey. I have gone through the embarrassment and the shame, and they got encouraged. I want to thank you, uh, to thank Dr. and Professor Koigi for also coming together to open Fertility Society of Kenya, and all the efforts that we've seen around. It's because Mark came on board, and thank you so much, Russia. You've been on the forefront on this. And as we started, it's not going to end here in Kenya. We will go across the border. We will go all over in Africa and make sure that together we fight the stigma and that together we set the woman of Africa free. Uh, we have IVF bill in Parliament. It's coming to a committee of the whole House where we gather all the amendments from the public, from the experts, professionals, from church, from all other religions. Because there is so much fear. It's a new thing in Kenya, but IVF itself is not new. It has been happening. So why don't we bring regulations and rules to make sure that it's governed? That's what we're doing from legislative part uh, of, of it. And we want to encourage all the governors. After the bill has gone through, I'm sure, we realize that the cost of it will go down. And for us is to push to make sure that all level five and level four hospital, if possible, 
will have infertility clinics and IVF clinics. With the help of uh, Dr. Macharia and the government, I'm sure we are able to set up those clinics so that to make sure there is accessibility to the women that are on the, on the ground level. Because when we just talk in Nairobi, it's not enough. We need to reach out to them. We need to educate them that before we get to IVF, there's early detection, early prevention, and early treatment. Because IVF is not, it's not just anybody who can afford it. But let's get this message out there that they should get tested, they should get treated, so that to prevent the, the high cost of them getting a, ch a child. Thank you very much, and thank you so much, Mark, and God bless you.